guys, it's Chris, aka Beauty of the Day, and we have Lavender Lee here, my very special guest. We are at um, NBE in Foxwoods, Connecticut, and we have a wonderful guest here, Mr. David Gerlitz, who, who would love to tell his vape story. Uh, my vaping story is probably uh, 37 years long because it starts out with me having been a kid, a former smoker quit, anti-tobacco activist, and then a entrepreneur and visionary of what I believe to be one of the most beneficial alternatives for smokers when they are ready to choose to switch. It's got to be up to them. So uh, I've been historically watching the exponential growth of vaping since 2006 and 7, and I'm amazed at the culture that has been formed around it, and I'm so pleased to be a part of it for one reason only, and that is that people who vape are going to live longer. You know, they're happier. Just look at this convention. You got people who are smiling, you know, because for years, as smokers, they were ostracized and called losers and pedophiles and child abusers for smoking around their kids, and, and it's so wrong on so many levels. And knowing what I know about vaping and what it does to the human condition, the element of humanity, and that is you're enhancing your life without even knowing it, and you didn't need the freaking government to tell you to do it. You did it yourself. You didn't need the government to subsidize you and give you grants to go buy a starter kit. No, you did it because you decided, for me, it's time for me to stop smoking 4,762 chemicals, gases, poisons, irritants, Vapors and pesticides, of which 60 causes cancer, and vaping has five ingredients, of which three are generally regarded as safe in any other. So I dare anybody to debate me, including a congressperson or a senator or a lawmaker or somebody in public health, because they're full of shit. And they are lying to the American people and to vapors, which is scaring off a lot of smokers who would transition over, but they're told all this misinformation that tobacco is as bad as vaping and vaping is, is all lies, okay? I need to raise my voice proportionate to the havoc that's being raised by tobacco companies on human lives. And vaping, in, in the last six year, seven years, I've seen vaping affect nine million Americans who have voluntarily quit smoking. Maybe a doctor told them they should quit and they needed to find something to help them over that edge. Because when I quit smoking in 1988, it was the hardest thing I ever did. I'd rather give fucking birth. You know, I, I, I would, and I say that tongue in cheek, but I would. It was the hardest thing I ever did. How do, how do you quit smoking something that's been a part of you since you were a kid? You know, it's like losing your best friend. And nobody tells you, nobody prepares you for that. Every, everybody's just saying quit. It's a, it's, a, it's a crutch. It's a binky, okay? And also with that binky comes the satisfaction of nicotine, which we all know is a stimulant. It's not a depressant. It's not, I smoke because I got stress. Well, screw you because you're not smoking because your stress is going to be reduced. It's a stimulant. But it, what it is, it's a distraction for whatever is causing the stress of that moment. So if you're pissed off or angry or you're in a road rage situation and somebody's making you, you don't smoke a cigarette. You just need a distraction so you're not thinking and wanting to kill that motherfucker. Okay? So the distraction that I'm talking about is that what smokers need to now be able to psychologically prepare for the loss of that friend, but now they're able to do it because now they're physiologically getting what they still need. They still have the hand-to-mouth experience, and now added to that is wonderful flavors and the element of nice rather than stinky, smelly, carbon monoxide, tar, nicotine, arsenic, cyanide, formaldehyde, benzene, and ammonia, and the list goes on and on and on. And then when you see these people who are happy, so what if they're vaping? They're not doing anything that you wouldn't do if you have asthma or bronchitis because the same three ingredients in vaping, propylene glycol, glycerin, and water, is in a vaping device that I use for my COPD. And the only thing it has is nicotine. Nicotine is not the killer. It's the smoke, as everybody will tell you. Every doctor in the United Kingdom is now recommending vaping. But no, our country has to find ways to overtax the shit because now they want their money when they didn't even come up with this product. So so my vaping story is that I don't vape other than when I'm with people who vape. And I vape zero nicotine because it's available. And the goal of vaping for a lot of people was to get off of combustible, get their flavoring that they like with the milligrams of nicotine that they're used to, whether it's 18 or 24 or 12 or 8 or 0. But it's up to them as a grown-up to make that decision when they are ready 
for themselves on their own and for their family, not because Big Brother or Nanny State says you need to because you are a disgusting pig. Okay, so that's why people are happy here. They're getting, they're getting free juices. It's flavorful. Some people like tobacco flavor. I personally don't. I don't like nicotine in my e-liquid. Some do. And they will, when they're ready, notice at some point, if they do it the right way, which was intentionally to quit smoking, the vaping. but now vaping has become pleasurable, just like drinking a beer or vodka or playing golf you know, or having sex. You know, whatever you find pleasure in as a grown-up, as long as it's not killing you, you know, and vaping will not kill you. No one has died from vaping yet. And everybody in the anti-tobacco community and anti-vaping community is saying, well, shit, we don't know the long-term effects of vaping. Well, we know the long-term uh, effects of smoking, and that's still legal. You know, if you ever heard, you know, it's like, it's like I, I, I use the analogy that, you know, if you ever heard of the Titanic, when the ship is going down and everybody's desperate, in the Carpathia, the Carpathia, the other ship that came alongside of it, you don't say, don't get on until we check the ship out. Okay? When you're desperate, you jump on the ship and you hope for the best. And that's what vaping was. You jumped on the ship to vape, to get off of cigarettes, and people found the best out of it. And that is, it's flavorful, they like it, it's pleasant, it makes them calm because they get the nicotine that they want, because whatever distraction caused them stress when they were smoking, now the distraction has now changed because you're vaping, and you got to maybe fool around with the pot or throw drip, put your drip in or your liquid in. So I just think it's a problem. The it, it's right up there with fire and water. You know, vaping for 42 million remaining smokers has got to re, remain a viable option, and the government's trying to take that away because they're pissed off because they didn't invent it. They now they can't control it, and there's no way that you can put tobacco alongside of vaping. Okay. Just like they say, well, it's an e-cigarette. It's like, it's not smoking. There's no tobacco. There's no smoke, okay? It's like calling a bicycle a car. No, it's a vehicle. Just like, you know, we call the uh, vaping device, you know, electronic nicotine delivery system. It can be if you're using nicotine. It can be if you're using CBD. It can be if you're using zero. So but if, you, if you try to t tell me that my bicycle is a car, I'm going to tell you you're fucked up because it's not a car. It may have wheels, it may have a seat, it may have brakes, it may have the same mechanisms of steering. It may get you from point A to point B, but don't call it a car. Just like you can't call a car a bike. We don't regulate a bike like we do a car. We don't have to have emissions. We don't have to have it inspected. We don't have to have a license. We don't. No. So let's call vaping something different. Yes, maybe we shouldn't have called it e-cigarettes 10 years ago because it made that... It's a, E-cigarettes maybe was not the best choice, but you can't put toothpaste back in a tube. You, know, you can't unring a bell. So all I want to try to do is educate people with my personality, which sometimes can be politically insensitive, and I may not have the uh, filter on my mouth that I should, but I'm so fucking tired of fucking people telling me how to live my fucking life that they need to be told and held accountable for the lies that they're making up to try to get me to do it because they are now trying to manipulate me and cause me to do something they want me to do because they have a moral indignation that I'm mimicking smoking. So I do have a problem with the tobacco community. I have a problem with the government. I have a problem with big pharmaceuticals. I have some problems with the vaping community because there are some dickheads out there. There are some people who are like really weird in the vaping community. But you know what? God love them. We have weird senators. We have weird congressmen. We have weird cops. We have weird nurses. We have near, weird, te weird teachers. So what? But the people that I'm t falling in love with now are the community of real people doing a real thing to enhance their lives for the right reason. And it's very simple. It's not really that profound. So my vaping story is a little bit unique from everybody else. And you can talk to anybody. Yeah, I smoked for 20 years. I got sick of it. I bought a starter kit and I quit smoking and I love it. I'll, that's fine. That's great. My story goes beyond that. I was one of the reasons why people started to begin with. I was one of the reasons why I tried to get kids that never start. So I waffled on both sides of the fence, but I got thrown under the bus by both of them. The tobacco community and the anti-tobacco community because they're all as corrupt and they're in bed together. They are sleeping together, sleeping with the enemy. I won't sleep with them. I will no longer, you know, perpetuate the myths and the lies about what vaping does. It doesn't do anything other than enhance your life. You know, it may not be perfect. It may not be 100% safe. But if I'm in a burning building and you're in a burning building, would you rather jump from the second story or the 50th story? I think you have a better shot, you know, with the second story. But people don't want to listen 
because somehow we're losers and we smoke before, so therefore we have no worthiness, and that's wrong, and we need to cease and desist that right away. That's why I do these shows. So my story is unique and different, and working with unique e-cigs now in Syracuse is a good, good opportunity for me. You know, they didn't find me. I didn't find them. We kind of like chose each other because I believe in their e-liquid -E line that's going to enhance somebody's life who does vape. It's affordable. It's good retail, wholesale business to business partnerships, you know, because everybody can make money and it's a flavorful, it's a good, clean liquid that has been watched. So I know that we need regulation. I'm all for regulation, as we all should be. I'm, yeah, I'm all for taxation, reasonable taxation. I am all for banning minors from vaping. All, totally. But we were for that before. We knew this already. We did it voluntarily. Okay, The tobacco companies still have 11 states, or the United States has 11 states that still don't have laws for minors to smoke cigarettes. Did you know that? A lot of people, 11 states out of 50. 39 states have laws that says, you know, kids get, 11 states have no law on the books. 11. After all these years, and I think the government, in my, in my, and I'll leave it with this. In 1964, the Surgeon General was a guy by the name of Luther Terry, Surgeon General. He went before Congress and the American people and said, smoking kills. He didn't say tobacco killed. He said smoking kills. It has been proven. 1964. Where were you in 64? Where were you in 64? Okay. 1964 to 2009, when President Obama came up with the Tobacco Control Act, said that we are now going to get involved. In 45 years went by before the government got involved. 45. Now, I think the government gave up the right to control anything if it took them 45 years to put a handle on the problem. And to this day, we still have about 20% of high school kids smoking cigarettes. Still. And I know we have 42 million smokers out there who want to quit. You know, whether it's 18 or 20% or 22%, but the surveys that the anti-tobacco people use is saying, we're winning the war because kid, teenagers aren't vaping, or they're not smoking. Do you know where they're going for their nat national youth survey? Provo, Utah. Now, there's a good chance that the teens in Provo, Utah aren't doing anything. Okay, and if they are, you know, they don't do it for long, okay? They're not smoking. They say they're not smoking, they're not drinking, they're not having sex. Yeah, okay, whatever. But when a, a Mormon, and I'm, I'm a Baptist, okay? Um, when a Mormon is asked, do you smoke, there's a good chance they're going to say no. So that's the statistic that they use to show, because we're reducing teenage smoking, so therefore we get more grant money for the master settlement. See, it's just this big, vicious circle. So don't think for a minute that the tobacco companies aren't waiting in the wings with their devices that they've had. They ha they've had more money than everybody in this room combined to come up with. They're just waiting for us to screw up really bad because you do 99 things right, nobody knows. You do one thing wrong, everybody hears. So we need to fix it. And what I, what I bring to the party, what I bring to the dance is a very straightforward approach, and that is if you smoke and you want to quit, try vaping. Get yourself to a reputable store. Expect to pay less money than you are for your cigarettes, especially if you live in New York at thirteen fifty or fourteen dollars a pack. Okay, there will be taxation. You can buy it online. There's going to be law. We're going to try to fix it. You know, the the war isn't over. We just have to now start fighting a fair fight. And if the anti-tobacco people and tar big pharmaceutical and the tobacco companies are throwing spears at the vaping community and knives and bullets. We gotta stop returning fire with Nerf darts and marshmallows. It's time. It's time to take time to take the gloves off and get freaking mad. Okay, and I'm mad, but I try to do it. And there's nothing wrong with a good dose of anger therapy if it's directed at the right people. And unfortunately, the vaping industry, we're we're directing our anger at other vapors and groups and leaders. So we need to stop all that. And and people don't know what to do with me. For the last seven years, they don't. Know. He's got a big mouth. He's, he says the f word. You know, he, you know, he he's old. You know, I don't care what they call me. I'm just going to tell my story, which is why I appreciate the opportunity to tell it here. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but I. That's only this much of who I am. This story is just this much. Okay, I could talk to you until 2019. You know, it's still not be done because I got 30 
33, 34 years as a former smoker, targeted market as a kid like we did for years, addicted to a drug, winding up with the end result, which a lot of people fear when you're young. But I'll tell you what, you think about dying a lot more at 67 than you did when you're 31. And I'm 67. So certainly I think about dying a lot more now than I did before with the damage that I only, not only did to my lungs, but also my, my heart and all the poisons that I put into my body. So I'm expecting a bad result. I already have COPD and emphysema. Uh, and that's usually a precursor for something else down the road, whether it be oxygen. I want people to avoid that if they possibly can. And if my story will help them, okay, if it doesn't, we try. We have to try. You know, we have to try to stop bullies. We have to try to stop, you know, people from, um, you know, hurting children and animals. We got to do a lot. Of, we're, we're inundated with, with crap. And when life gets in the way, you look for the first thing that's going to reduce some of that stress, and that is a distraction, whether it be a drink, whether it be a little pot, whether it be a little CBD, because we're tired. I'm tired. I'm, you, know, you go to a funeral of somebody 72, 70, nobody's crying. They're ready to freaking go. They're, they're over with this nonsense. Now, you know, because, you know, funerals, you know, are, are for the living. They're not for the dead. And unfortunately, the people who have died prematurely from a smoking-caused illness are paying the price that they were not totally should be held accountable for. Because that's the only thing that a kid's held accountable for for the rest of their life. Did you know if you're on heroin or crack or marijuana or, or uh, Oxycontin, you can go to rehab? But if you're a smoker, you're a loser and you're no good. You deserve to die. Quit or die. Quit or die. We have an opportunity to enhance their life. Okay? And I do believe that when you hold a child accountable for a lifetime addiction, when they were enticed and encouraged and lured and tricked and lied to, shame on us. And we need to grow the fuck up. And we need to really tell it like it is and call our senators and our congressmen like your, your senator in Connecticut, Dickie Blumenthal. And Richard uh, and, and the other ones, I forget that, Barbara Boxer and Jay Rockefeller and Sherrod Brown, all these dem Democrats. And I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I, I just think the Democrats are really screwed up because they've been taking money from Big Tobacco and Big Pharma for so long that they have a pact. And I know they have a pact. And that is that they will track the vaping community until Big Pharmaceutical and Big Tobacco is ready to come in on their white horse and save the day by now making it legal to vape because we've done all the work for them. And all they have to do is come in and write a check for $7 million to get 13 of their flavors, their mods and devices. And that's the bottom line. So if people don't want to hear it, fine. If only one-tenth of 1% 1 of vapors go out and see a documentary that Aaron Bieber did, shame on them. That's all that saw it. So I'm, I'm just ready to tell my story over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So now you got here Rodman here. You know, uh, you know Rodney? Uh, so anyway, that's my story, and, and I would love to be able to uh, share more whenever you want because I think it's important. I think I'm I'm different. I'm, hopefully, I'm not boring. You know, but when I can talk about my life, but but I, I can't say it for hours anymore. It gets me too angry. Then I then I have to go out and have an adult beverage, you know, or I want a cigarette, you know, because they really piss me off. But I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, David. And yes, I mean, you know, and, and what's sad is that what you just said about the billion lives, I it was just released on iTunes, right? A billion lives just yeah, released iTunes, on iTunes. And also on Netflix, you can rent it for three ninety nine. Who the hell doesn't have three ninety nine? Yeah. To watch somebody who has gone not just me, because I'm only this much of it. Uh, but when you have a director who spent three years trying to expose the corruption, and if you saw the movie, all the people we're talking about. The ones who refused to be interviewed on camera was American Cancer, American Lung, American Heart, CDC, Campaign for Tobacco. It goes on and on and on. So I'm just pretty disgusted with the whole thing. But when you have only 1 or 2 or 3% of the people doing 100% of the work, it's very frustrating. Because sometimes you just want to walk away and say, screw it. You know, you know, you fend for yourself. You know, but I, I can't do it yet. I'm not ready to do that because I think I can motivate people. If given a chance, and if the community, and I mean the industry, I mean Safada, and I mean CASA, and I mean BTA, and I mean ABA, and I mean EBCA, and I mean all those people who are now trying to lead, okay, 
you know, if you're if you think you're a leader, and you look, look, keep walking, and you look behind you, and there ain't nobody there, you ain't leading. You're walking. Okay. You need to see who's following you. And right now, there's not a lot of people following Kasa and Safada and ABA. And I love the people. I, I, it's not an indictment against them. They're just doing it the wrong way, different than what I would do. But I think 33 years of experience gives me the right to speak my mind. And I, they won't even invite me to a think tank to discuss this. They'll, they'd rather listen to a 30-minute story on Billion Lives and think that, well, yeah, he's militant. You know, I, I'm not militant. I'm pissed. I'm angry. And if that makes me militant, so be it. But I, I, have, I have strategies, and I want to use them. And I'm going to continue to use them, with or without them. So they can kiss my ass. Or they can, they can join me or get out of the way. That's my story. Thank you, David, so much. You're such a doll. Thank you.